This is the first video in a series of videos to come that will further explain our sanitary sewer situation. This video will focus on the specifics of the project and the outcomes available to us. Let's start by looking at the current infrastructure. My house is in the middle left of this photo at the corner of the two white streets. For reference, the blue line is a water line, green stormwater, red is sanitary sewer or wastewater, and the purple are abandoned sanitary sewer. You'll notice that there are quite a few sanitary sewer lines abandoned in this photo. The big thing to notice here is that there are multiple lots not serviced by sanitary sewer, notably the ones below my home and to the right of it. There are houses on the left side that are not serviced, but there's actually a sanitary manhole on that side of the street and it's unmarked. It's important to note that a good chunk of the gyms map, which is being shown in this picture, is simply mismarked or incorrect. I went to the city with a simple plan. My business partner owns the lot across the street from me where you see the abandoned purple wastewater line going vertically. I offered to follow that line from the back of my property through my other property to the red main line at the top. This main line is the one I'm ultimately connecting to either way. This would serve all the properties needing a sewer line. I could do this work for roughly $10,000 excluding permits and bonds. This would connect both of my properties that are being built all in one fell swoop. My plan was rejected by Public Works in favor of this approved project. It will go through the public right-of-way, connecting only my residence and connecting to the existing manhole shown in the top left. Take a moment to note some of the issues. It crosses stormwater lines. The water line it crosses is at a different depth and therefore needs to be dug up and bent. There will be sidewalks replaced. The street in two places needs to be cut up and replaced. At the end, it needs to turn to dodge the fire hydrant, which is already over the wastewater main, because it can't be too close to a wastewater line, of course, adding another manhole. But all along, be wary of the telephone poles and gas lines that are in the way. It's no wonder that this project will cost at least $70,000. It's the most inefficient way to do it. And I'm going to abide by the rules and the regulations. And that's Six hundred thousand dollars. By the, whatever the rules and the regulations. Whatever the are. cost. This is the main line repeated over and over. I can't run a line efficiently because of a process. They won't accept anything outside of the process. Reviewers and public works engineers know that this process is inefficient and often problematic, but they ultimately stand behind it. A simple story can explain it all. In order to receive approvals within this process, the engineer must go to AT&T, regardless of if their lines are in the area, and get their signature for approval. When doing this, I asked the signer why they simply didn't just go to the perming center on a walkthrough day when plans were to be approved and sign everyone's project at once. She laughed and said, ha, that would be easier, wouldn't it? Instead, we get to go visit them. I guess wasting our time is a joke. And boy, did they waste it. We spent 15 months on the project. The city probably never thought an engineering firm would bill them hourly. All 42 meetings, 19 revisions, and more. So I went with contract in hand and showed them how much time it took. They immediately balked at the cost. We discussed in a meeting what was reasonable. The employee who reviews the contract said, Normally, you see, we only can reimburse like 25 to 40, never an exceed 40. I heard, yeah, yeah I, I went through the And other. even the CIP projects, they even lower than our DPC project because mm -hmm. uh, those small projects, mm -hmm. the engineer percentage a little bit higher than the larger project. That's everyone understand it. So, but the never high come to the 88%. <laughs> so I can. It's normally on the high side. 40% when projects are like mine, smaller with less economies of scale. So the city of Houston's own reviewer thought it would be maybe $25,000 to $30,000 in engineering costs. I asked for their legal team to get involved because it was clear that they simply didn't want to pay more because they had a number in mind regardless of the actual costs. It only got worse. Their legal team effectively just started throwing out a majority of the costs and when challenged said, I guess we see it differently. We could sue. 
it might be resolved in two years. Maybe. It's not a great solution. In case anyone was wondering, septic systems are also illegal. If at any point in this, you wanted to throw your hands up in the air and say, I'll just do it myself, you're again mistaken. That's the message here. It's not about connecting to sewer. It's about following a process that ties your hands. But what if you don't follow the rules? What if you say no to the process? At some point, a Houston police officer will have to shut down me connecting my house to sewer. Councilmember Lancaster. He's going to make you do it. Councilmember Lancaster. And I won't let it Mr. happen. Mr. Krieger. The point I was trying to make is that a reasonable way to end this situation is for me to simply pay to connect the sewer myself. I'll run the line in the most efficient way without damaging any infrastructure. Police will be the one to shut me down, and I had hoped that these officers, having seen me multiple times, would feel morally compelled to reject such a discriminatory order. Well, hope don't float. After counsel, these two officers came outside and had a chat with me. Have a quick listen. I subtitled the back end of it as counsel let out and it became hard to hear. That if we show up at the order of the no. mayor, or if we show up to stop you, that you order of the no. mayor, order of the no. mayor, order of the no. mayor. Walk out. Is everyone else required to go? Uh, yeah, they can stay. They haven't been they acting as though they're in a mental distress. Mental Walk distress. That way right now. Let's go. Come on. This way. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Have a good night. Sir, we have to stay. Sir, what's the situation here? I think your wife could be better. What's the situation? The Neuropsychiatric Center. The Neuropsychiatric Center. The Neuropsychiatric Center. It's very difficult to know. After counsel, I was threatened to rest under what officers described as Mayor Turner's orders and told that I would be put in an insane asylum. It's not about working together to build up Houston. It's about power. Do the work their way, approved only by them, with whatever payment they want to agree to, and if you don't, they'll lock you up and throw you away. It's scary. This is our city. Again, I hope that you sign our petition, contact your representatives, and spread the word. Together we can put a stop to this. At the end of this video, I'm sharing the full video of my speech at council and the recording of the officers in full. Thank you.